On today's episode, we're gonna learn about something I never hear anyone talk about. As a huge Boss fan, I wanna know everything about Boss, but a big missing piece to the story is what was before Boss? How is Boss the Boss that we know? So today's episode is me setting down with Yoshi, the president of Boss, and asking him about everything that was before, before Boss was Boss. So here it is. I'm Yoshi Kigami from BOSS. I joined Roland in 1978, so 40 years working. And, but, but Josh is asking me very much old stuff, so I investigated information and I brought some old brushes. And, you know, right now, no one knows uh, about uh, such an old product at, at our uh, company. So anyway, I'll try. <laughs> to start off, mm -hmm. everyone knows Boss as this. Yeah. I think, you know, the compact pedal changed everything. So what I wanna talk about today is the mystery, the mystery of how we got to the compact pedal. So as a collector, a huge Boss fan, you mm -hmm. know that, and the kind of a pedal nerd. I know way too much useless information about yeah. pedals. I can't figure out how we got to the compact from things like this mm -hmm. or these Roland units. Yeah. Specifically, Roland pedals. Do you have any stories about why Roland decided to get into guitar pedals? Yeah, originally Roland started to make a, a rhythm machine. At, at, at that old days uh, in Japan, the band that was band boom, kind of like. So the, everybody played uh, electric guitar, mm -hmm. and then before Roland, uh, Mr. Kakehashi established the uh, Ace Tone. Ace Tone uh, provided a guitar amplifier. So that maybe it's uh, not special for them to make an uh, effect, uh, okay. because you know in Japan. We don't have any guitar effect. Everything, every unit is coming from United States or UK. So they try to make same same stuff. It's a, it's a natural. You know? Yeah, yeah, just a natural progression. Yeah. So mid late seventies, you see. A lot of fuzz boxes. You see some companies come on the scene, DOD or MXR, mm -hmm. but all of this Roland product mm -hmm. is incredibly different. Mm -hmm. The circuits are wild, they're creative. The AF100 Bebop. This was the first mm -hmm. Roland pedal? Yes. What year? in 1972. Really? Yeah. I was way off. <laughs> I'm glad I'm asking you. 1972. And then this is the same series, the yeah. AG5. Funny so, Cat. Funny Cat. It's uh, next year, 73. 72 and 73. Yeah. Wow. I don't know uh, how many we produced, but, but you know, at that time, I said the name Bieber. <laughs> Kind of like strange, right? Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? Do you it, it came from the sound. Okay. Niba. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's very useful, but it's also strange. You have this fuzz with a treble booster, tone selector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it makes more sense to me now being earlier 70s um, because I think fuzz was still a primary thing. 
This guy, Funny Cat. I love that name. Yeah. The thing about these that I really love, you know, I name pedals names mm -hmm. and funny. Sometimes they're funny or they have an image to them. Boss is, is you know, DS1, mm -hmm. DS2, and it says distortion. Yeah. Of course, these have funny names. It's, it's a part of, it's a part of Roland and Boss you don't really see, you know, Bebop. Funny cat. <laughs> At that time, we're famous crybaby or something, you know. Okay. So everybody says uh, uh, use use the funny name. So probably. Uh, okay. about these wah pedals so yeah. we'll talk about the ad50 aw10 a series again mm -hmm. so i guess i'm assuming early 70s now that i know that yeah. um yeah what what was you know this is a very this is a standard wah mm -hmm. i guess like a crybaby kind of thing but this one is so um unique um, there were a lot of fuzz wahs, color sound, and people were doing that, but I love this one. This is one of my favorite ones. Anything about these in particular that you know? Double beat. Maybe I have no idea about this <laughs> stuff. That's great. No, yeah. that's okay. That's so it's probably safe to assume that these were like the funny cat era. Mm. Yeah, they're just a fuzz wah. I love that you don't know. It's like, <laughs> it makes me feel better because I don't know my own pedals from 10 years ago. <laughs> so you're dealing you're dealing with 40 plus, well, actually more. You're, yeah. This is almost 50 years ago. I enjoy that you don't know and that's okay <laughs> because that's, that's why this is so mysterious. Yeah. If I can sit with the president of Boss and there's questions there, that's pretty cool. You know, that's fun. This is amazing. Yeah, this is very old. I bronze. can't read it, but yeah, in Japanese. <laughs> that's so cool. The BG. I don't have the BG. Immediately after this interview, Josh bought a BG. Here's what it sounds like. Yeah, this is funny. <laughs> Dero, Yamaha. <laughs> Stamps so, on it. So Yamaha was the distributor yeah, yeah. for early. That's amazing. Okay, so I have a Roland AP5. Mm -hmm. It's a phase five. And this is one of, this may be the best phaser I've ever played mm -hmm. because it has this sensitivity setting. Mm -hmm. You pick through it and the harder you pick yeah. the phase. Yeah, touch blue, control. It's a touch right? control. Yeah. yeah, what year, anything about this? Yeah, we produced them from 1975. Okay. To 78. Only three years. Wow, that's not long at all. So till 78. Um, so it did, it, it existed with the compacts for a little bit. Mm -hmm. still made pedals while Boss had compacts. Yes. There was crossover. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I kind of always, 
I assumed that it was very linear. Mm. Roland, stop it, make boss. Nope. It wasn't that way. Which goes back to this. Were these sold at the same time, probably? Yes. You mentioned there's yeah. kind of distribution in America and yeah. all that. I'm learning a lot here. This is... Yeah, BF1 from 77 to 80. Yeah, I, I had always assumed that it was Roland stops guitar and makes boss, but it was not. It was at the same time. This pedal is really strange and really awesome. It is the Roland AP7 Jet Phaser. Collecting these up, I see Jet Phaser and I think, you know, sometimes people say flange is like a jet, like mm -hmm. a, the movement. Yeah. Well, the jet in this is a distortion. So it's mm -hmm. like a distortion when you see the jet control, you're actually jet is a distortion and it was just wild. I remember I plugged it in for the first time and was like, what is happening? This is a distortion phaser. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. So what year is this? Uh, that's from 75 to 78. How well did these sell? Do you know at all? You don't? I have no idea. Yeah, because you were just starting. That mm -hmm. would be, you're, you're assembling synthesizers and yeah. stuff and they're selling this. So here is a, a, a really cool visual example um, that a lot of people haven't noticed or mm -hmm. seen. You have the Roland Phase 2. And then later you have the Boss 1 series. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, that's the same enclosure. Yeah. Different labeling. How did this happen? How did we end up with a Roland pedal, same enclosure, and then mm -hmm. suddenly we call it Boss? So, very beginning, we don't have Boss brand or Roland brand. But in, in the US, uh, we have a, a sales company, and they are selling uh, some acoustic guitar pickups and preamps because we have not enough product, you know. So they started selling uh, such kind of stuff on the same, same sales channel. Then uh, they started to use boss name on uh, acoustic preamp. Okay, so the, pick, the acoustic preamp was called the boss. Yeah. Okay, I've seen that, really mm -hmm. rare. And also uh, boss was uh, called MEG. Yeah. M-E-G. Okay. But we decided to use boss name as a brand and also a company. So this this transition from Roland pedal to Boss pedal mm -hmm. was creating a new company yeah. to make products to yes. fill the catalog and do do mm -hmm. new things. So that's that's kind of double branding, uh, having different image, and also you know sometimes sales uh, channel and also contract with dealers. You know, Roland brand and Boss brand uh, took a, a little bit different condition. What was the first one series pedal released? So this is a BF1. Mm -hmm. I have the compressor. I have some yeah. other things. Maybe first one was AS1 in 1973. Uh, Sustina. Okay. This it, is the first number one. I like that pedal because it says something really big about pedals at the time. It says on the box, distortion-free sustainer. Mm -hmm. Everyone had only seen sustain on a big muff knob. Yeah. And you guys created a true clean sustain. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. We didn't have any you know, idea about the number. So first one was AF100, then AS1, next AG5. So I think we didn't have any rules uh, about the number. Yeah, when I when I think of Boss, it's very 
one, two, three. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, Voss was just more, just kind of not as organized than mm -hmm. the numbering. Yeah, BF1 is 1977. So from BF1, maybe we keep using one, like a DM1, okay, something like that. When was the compact format mm. this? When was it first thought of? Why was it thought of? We've all seen these pedals a million times. I'm from America. Any American guitar player I know, this is this is as normal as it gets. It's like a Fender Stratocaster mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. But but it's hard to imagine it not existing. So I'd like to know what caused this thought, the compact, mm -hmm. the small compact. Uh, very beginning, uh, U.S. effect use 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 the uh, uh, kind of like box mm -hmm. that was a uh, switch for the light on the wall right yes <laughs> oh okay yeah so that is uh, just you know uh, using another uh, purpose mm -hmm. but that is not not cute right <laughs> right so or probably uh, our people thought we should have something special shape and also they were uh, thinking uh, the pro what is the problem? You know, uh, replace uh, battery is very difficult. Always, you know, you have to open the screw. So everything they were thinking every night, you know, overnight, overnight. Then they created this design. I've said this before uh, in, in a lot of ways. It is absolutely the perfect guitar mm -hmm. pedal. How does it feel, your perspective now, president of Boss, mm -hmm. to still be using this format that, yeah. how old? This is 40 plus years old? Yeah, and, from 1977. Yeah. And it is still perfect. It was perfectly designed that yes, long ago. Yes. Yeah. Some years ago, a lot of guys asked me, why you don't make mini pedal? My, my answer was, why we need to make different shape? We have this legendary, historical, great design. So I don't want to change. Don't change it. No. Ever. Don't no. change. I won't let you. <laughs> <laughs> so, with all the mystery around these old Roland pedals, mm -hmm. some of these now fifth, almost 50 years old, yeah. um, why do you think that even you guys, it's just such a mystery, like some of the exacts? Yeah, you know, uh, you have a lot of stuff, but we don't have everything. We started to purchase all the stuff from the market, maybe 10 years ago or something. We didn't think, you know, uh, also, we are creating a lot of stuff. Always thinking about the future, future, future. Uh, don't we didn't care about the, you know throwback something. No, it's amazing. Yeah, I love that. Um, I love that you guys have been continually innovating, pushing guitar industry, pushing guitar effects up to this day. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that you don't know a few of these things. I think it's cool. I, I like that there's some mystery in it. Yeah, and also, you know, everybody asks me, what is your best uh, product? Right. Always the newest one is my favorite. Right, right. Because I've are, heard you say yeah, that for years. We are trying to make the best one. Yeah. So the newest one is the best. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. My favorite part of being able to sit with Yoshi and ask these questions was realizing, as you saw, that he doesn't actually know all the answers and that Boss themselves 
don't quite remember everything. It makes me feel better about my remembrance of JHS pedal history, but it also lets us know that a lot of history is getting lost. So I really appreciate you watching these episodes, sharing them, and our JHS show patrons who make episodes like this possible by funding trips and interviews and just all the work it takes to produce this type of content. So like the episode, if you liked it, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get notifications of every future episode. In the description below is a link to Band Lab. You can go over there and jam along with the jams from today. That's fun. Um, that's it. We're done here. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite vintage pedal is from the before boss was boss land. Bye-bye.